been chewing Is it on? Yeah. Okay. So we've covered surface area. We've covered uh, concentration with the um, the clock iodine and reaction. We've covered temperature with the light sticks. We've covered uh, a catalyst with the green monster reaction. We'll do another catal uh, uh, catalyst reaction in a second. But I want to bring this one. Now, if there is a gas, if you have gases as your reactants, and this is only true for gases because gases are affected by pressure more so than liquids or solids. So pressure is always a factor in gases. But if you have gases who are your reactants and you increase the pressure, you're going to push them closer together. So if I have my dance floor with 100 people and now I make them dance and keeping their movements similar and their speed similar, if I make them dance in a smaller place with the same number of particles, obviously the number of collisions does what? Right, that's Boyle's law, right? The volume gets smaller, the pressure increases. It's inversely related. We learned that in the gas laws. So if you have gases with your reactants and you increase the pressure, you push them together, and obviously the effective collisions or the number of collisions increases, and therefore the number of effective collisions statistically increases. So I don't have a great demonstration for gases, but I love this demonstration. Um, I keep saying every year that I'm going to build a new one that's bigger, but when it works, it's pretty cool. It's not exactly what we're talking about, but what the heck. It's a good one and it's fun to do. What I have is a screen, and inside I have an evaporating dish. And what I'm going to put in the evaporating dish is I'm going to put some paper soaked in alcohol. This soaked in al alcohol vapor is going to basically be like a wick, and it's going to burn. What I'm going to do is spin the Lazy Susan. By spinning the Lazy Susan, I'm going to take the air okay and make it organized going in a circle make a vortex and making the air going in an organized circle it's going to spend less time pushing on it so the pressure or the air hitting the fire is going to be less if you think of a tornado inside of a tornado if the air is moving in a circle where my finger is if the air is moving in a circle then it's spending less time pushing inward and so the inside of a tornado has low pressure okay and it's the Bernoulli's effect so I'm essentially, I'm lowering the pressure on the fire, and hopefully the fire expands, okay, just by that. Now, it's not really a factor. I'm not really increasing the pressure to make the fire get bigger. I'm just playing around with pressure and fire. So in any case, I'm taking some uh, ethanol, which we used in our ping pong demonstration. And I essentially, I am lighting it. I, I am uh, dousing in ethanol which likes to combust, I'm going to put it into this container that's inside. And now I'm going to light it, OK? I don't know. Maybe we'll see it. You can shut the lights off. Here, I'll shut them off. Uh, Lily's got it. OK, I see nothing. You don't see nothing. Let me put on You can't see me. Okay. So let me light this up without lighting myself up. Okay. Okay, now. So there's my flame. Let it calm down. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this. I'm going to change the pressure around a fire. So there's my fire. And here, if I spin it, Fire comes up, stop it, comes down. I'm lowering the pressure around the fire. So this reaction is being affected by changes of pressure. Now it's not exactly increasing the pressure of gas reactants, but we're having fun. It's the Merdulia effect. I'm lowering the pressure. And you get the point for the print. Okay, and that's end of that story. Okay, lights on, please. Should have the clapping ones. Should have the clapping ones? <laughs> okay. Whoa, okay. Now, let's move over to the next demonstration. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hey. 
I'm, I'm, nothing like you eating something and me hanging over you, right? Okay. Now, what I have here is a, excuse me, sorry. Excuse me, sorry. Excuse me, sorry. Oh, okay. I have a volumetric flask. And um, hopefully this isn't this is hot. Okay. Now, what I'm going to put in this volumetric flask is some hydrogen peroxide, which likes to decompose into oxygen gas and water vapor. So it's going to make some gas. So I'm going to pour some in here. It's pretty reactive stuff. This stuff is more concentrated than the storeboard stuff that you have. And I thought I brought more out. I definitely didn't. I have the wrong one that I opened. Okay, I think I have another one out somewhere. Oh, that's the one. Okay, so I didn't want to just use this one, but I did. Okay, so I need a little bit more juju juice. So hydrogen peroxide is a liquid that decomposes. Yes. <laughs> okay. This is the one I definitely wanted. And in any case, let's have some more. Okay. Now, so I have a good amount of hydrogen peroxide. Right now it's reacting into oxygen gas and water vapor. But we don't see much of it happening. Why? The rate of reaction is too slow. What I'm going to do is put some soap, some Dawn, on the top. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add a catalyst to this. Now when I add a catalyst to this, I want the gas to be trapped in the soap and make bubbles. So I got a good amount of soap here. Probably way too much, but hey, more is better. Now, obviously, this is not working out too well. So I'm going to need a catalyst. Okay? So I'm going to add a catalyst. Catalyst is going to do what? Catalyst is going to find an alternative pathway, lower the activation energy, easy to climb the green monster, easy to climb the slide. And this should happen. Sometimes it gets to the ceiling, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, is that what that's called? Yeah, exactly. Oh, why did it get there? It's still what going. Is, sometimes my hydrogen peroxide isn't just open enough. Now, what I want to show you, though, I'll, I'll do one more time. Although I need to make some more catalyst. So I'll try it one more time because I'm not that satisfied either. Okay, but here's what I want to show you, though. So let's, let's take some of this. Potassium iodide. Get some water in here, make it nice and warm. We'll try this one more time. Because if we're not getting to the roof, you're right, it's not that cool. But here's what I want to show you though. What's trapped in the foam? This is another, what's trapped in the foam, guys? Oxygen. So right now, I have a splint. And it's a piece of wood. Now, you can see it burning. It's not correct. Now watch. I'm going to blow this out and stick it into the foam. Now, it's not doing exactly what I want. But what should happen is as I blow it out, let's do the other end one more time. Helpful if I had something that worked. Trade one for that works if that doesn't. Okay, so here's my splint. Okay, blow it out. 
pick it back in. You see it increase? Whoa. Why is the rate of reaction increasing? Because there's more oxygen in the foam than there is where? Than in the air. What kind of factor is this? Concentration, right, excellent. All right, get the idea. All right, so let's do this one more time. Okay, I'm not gonna pick that up, but don't touch the foam because there's iodine in it. All right? So that was bad. So we're gonna use a bigger tube, okay? How about that? Now they call this demonstration elephant toothpaste. You get the idea why? It just keeps going. Here we go. So we're gonna go for the elephant's toothpaste of the century. All right, that's way too much. A little more juju juice. Okay, that's a lot of soap. And now I need a catalyst. This has to dissolve completely. It's almost there. Okay, now my catalyst is hot too. You ready? Okay. I'm talking about you. Didn't shoot up high. <laughs> is it falling on the floor? Yeah, it's about oh, it does. Oh, Anyone see my life? Oh, God. <laughs> 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 I didn't fly up high, but it was really definitely impressive. Yeah, it's not on the floor now. Okay, so same idea though. Oh, that's a big clop right there. That's nuts. <laughs> That was definitely worth it. Still going. Now you can see why it's called elephant toothpaste, right? Okay, so same idea. Here's my splint. Not doing much. You can see that the rate of reaction increases because there's more oxygen stuck in the foam. Ready? <laughs> we'll just let that stay there. Like, oh. <laughs> All right. You gonna do it again? No, that's it. It's a big enough mess for me. To, don't please don't step on the foam. That this stuff actually has iodine in it. But that was that was pretty special. I like that. It didn't go up high, but it definitely Yay. did a nice boom. All right. So we have uh, ten more to do. No, we're done. Okay. We have one more rate factor to go over, and then that'll be it. And I'll just talk about it here. Yeah, don't touch the foam, guys, because it has iodine in it and it will stain your hands. And it's just not it's just not worth it. Unless you meant it, lied about it. I was being honest about it, my insincerity. Okay, so one last time. And one last piece to go over here, okay? And that is the following. So we've got all our factors down. We have our surface area, we have our concentration, temperature, catalyst, pressure, okay? And there's one more, okay? The one more is nature of reactant. Everyone forgets this. This is the one everyone gets wrong because they're not paying attention now. I have no demo. Okay, very important. We keep coming back to covalent versus ionic. How many times this course do we keep doing that? In solutions we did that. Electrolytes versus non-electrolytes, here we keep doing it. So, if I've got something that's ionic, what does it really mean to be ionic? It means a positive ion is attracting a negative ion. Now, if I have NaCl, what's it break apart into in water? It breaks apart into Na plus and Cl negative. It breaks apart into a positive 
and an anchor. Now, do you think that this reaction is fast or slow? Well, let's think about this for a second. Let me show you another reaction. Let's do chlorine with its what? Lewis dot diagram. That breaks apart, okay, into chlorine atoms. By the way, is this, this reaction the bottom endo or exo? I've got something bonded breaking apart into individual atoms. Is it exo or endo if something breaks? If I'm breaking a bond, is the bond stable or unstable? Who's more unstable, free atoms or the bond? Right, so my free atoms are right here. Hello, I can't get away from my curves. This is an endothermic process. Back in bonding, when you break a bond, it always takes energy. When you form a bond, energy is always released. Same concepts, guys, just different places. But look, here's what I'm after. What do you think is faster? The second one is a covalent bond, which is sharing electrons. To go from this to this, you've got to figure out who gets what electrons. Here, there's no electrons involved. I'm just separating. If it's a double replacement, what are you doing? You're taking another positive and another negative. Now, this negative what? Eyes, eyeballs, the positive, and say, hey, you're more positive, so I go with you. That's fast. If I'm positive and Jordan's negative, and I want to switch partners, Boom, there it is. All it was is my negative ion came to his positive. That's fast. There's no electrons involved. These guys are covalent bonded, have electrons involved. So if they ever ask you, hey, is this re which reaction is faster than another? Look carefully. The one that is ionic is going to be faster because you're just moving ions apart. That's all. The one that's covalent will be a little bit slower because you have to divvy up the electrons. It's called nature of reactant. Okay, let's go to our worksheet. Okay, let's, let's fill some of this out.